Hey, what's up guys? Brendan Edwards here, your professional drone cinematographer with Droner Tech, brought to you by Remote Pilot 101. And what we're gonna talk about today is a segment called Droner News. And what Droner News is, pretty much all the news you need to know as a professional drone cinematographer or just somebody who likes drone or somebody who flies recreational. Either way, it's great news that we bring to you every single month. So let's get into it. Up first, obviously coronavirus is on everybody's mind and UPS and CVS are coming together to present us with drone deliveries of medication. Now this is a really big deal because drone deliveries have been a big hot topic for quite some time. And now because of this pandemic, we are actually starting to see things happen. Residents of the largest retirement community in the United States in Florida called The Villages are going to be the first to receive their medications through drone delivery. And again, this is coming from UPS delivering it of the CVS medications. So we've talked a lot about drone deliveries on Droner News in the past, and this pandemic seems to be the catalyst to push everything forward where the FAA is now prioritizing this as something that needs to happen for public safety and public health. So we're gonna be definitely keeping our eyes on how this develops because this is going to be changing drone law and it's gonna be changing the general public's interaction with drones in general. So keep your eye on it, we'll do the same. We'll be back with more as we get it. Up next, the Mavic 2 Air. It's coming out in mid-May, and I actually had the privilege of being able to fly one of them a little bit ahead of time a couple weeks ago. And I will say, it does fly quite just like you'd expect it to as a DJI drone. It's very solid, it's really cool. I personally look at this drone as more of a Mavic 2 Pro Lite. Um, it shoots 4K 60, it shoots 48 megapixel camera uh, photos, and it really, it's, it has over 30 minute flight time. It's an impressive bird no matter how you look at it. The biggest technological advancement that actually comes with this drone is AirSense. And for those of us who don't know what that is, that is the new technology that DJI has that allows the drone itself to be able to alert local manned aircraft to the, its presence, as well as the opposite, where it will alert the drone pilot of uh, aircraft in the area. And for me, this could be a big I, big deal simply because I can't tell you how many times I've been on set, I'm flying, I'm doing everything the le most legal ways possible, and then a low flying helicopter that is flying below 400 feet or just at it, just zooms into set. And obviously that's super nerve wracking like nerve wracking for me as a drone pilot. You gotta drop altitude, go land the drone, look around and see if anything else is gonna happen. And this will be able to let you know ahead of time, like, hey, there's a helicopter a mile out that's coming towards you at low altitude and we can get out of the way long in advance and there won't be any mini heart attacks happening on set. So I personally think it's a good thing and it will be on all future DJI drones. Up next, we have MIT out here developing new ways to fly drones. Now, if you aren't familiar, one of the ways that drones have been flown before, DJI drones, is through gestures. With the DJI Spark, you could actually put your hand up, move it around. I've done it before. For me, 100% a gimmick. It looks like MIT wants to take the gimmick out of that and change the entire way that we interact with this type of technology and many more types of technology. And what they did is they figured out a way to use muscle contractions to be able to control the drone. And what they did is they put a sleeve around your arm and a couple electrodes to be able to sense what your muscles are doing. And with 81.5% accuracy, can tell you when you're doing what you're doing with your hand to control the drone a specific way. For example, squeeze your hand, the drone flies forward. Turn your wrist, the drone uh, turns 20, you know, 25% or something like that. Practically speaking, I honestly am never really gonna need to be able to intuitively fly drones with a sleeve or something like this because I grew up pretty much with a game controller in my hand and that's how I got into drones in the first place. But for those who aren't like me and are gamers, this could be a game changer because a lot of people are gonna have use for drones that aren't used to controllers. And this lowers, this could be some the type of technology that lowers the barrier of entry of people being able to access this type of technology or control different types of robotics or drones and do things like that in a much more intuitive way. There's a farmer in Iowa that just wants to check his crops every day and just wants to be able to point in the general direction of which crops he wants to look at so he can just get the feed or get the reading or get whatever. This could be that kind of game changer where he doesn't have to learn a whole new technology. He just know, needs to know, put this on a point. But it could really be changing the way and the barrier of entry of who can be using this type of technology, and I think it's a good thing. Conservationists are starting to use drones to monitor polar bears because polar bears are extremely reclusive. They're very, very hard to follow and study because obviously they're living in a very shrinking, a shrinking habitat. They live in snow, they bury themselves and hibernate to have their babies. And it's a very difficult thing and also a very dangerous type of animal to study because using these snowmobiles and riding across sheet, like thin sheets of ice to be able to find these polar bears is risking the researcher's life as well. They've recently actually got funding from the World Wildlife Fund to 
to be able to purchase drones, to be able to use them to study these polar bears. And boy, have they been useful. Because not only do they get camera drones, they got thermal camera drones. And these thermal camera drones are allowing them to be able to identify where these caves are, these snow caves where the polar bears are raising and rearing their young. And so this has just made everything safer, everything better, and of course, everything cuter, because now we get a bunch more polar bear footage. And the best part about all of this is the drones don't even seem to be bothering the bears at all. And last but not least, the, I know I touched it on the very first story that we talked about today, but the coronavirus really is changing the way that we see and interact with drones on a daily basis. The FAA is now granting the beyond visual line of sight waivers on a, on a rate that they have never done because they weren't really granting these waivers at all. And now there's 50, over 53 that have been granted. And these are the waivers that are allowing these drone deliveries, like I said earlier, to happen. We have municipalities using drones to be able to use loudspeakers to get people off beaches or off the streets where they shouldn't be or, you know, not practicing social distancing. We're starting to see drones be used by by municipalities and cities as a way to deal and work with the public and to be able to manage public safety. And that, I think, does allow for a new level of comfort in the way that we interact with them, as well as a new level of comfort in understanding that they are around and they're here to stay. And so this is something that I think is going to fundamentally change the way that our society sees and interacts with drones. And I'm really excited to see the positives that come from this. All right, Joiners, thank you guys so much for checking out the Joiner News brought to you by Remote Pilot 101, the best way to take the commercial pilot drone exam, which is why I passed it. If you guys want to see more of that, obviously there's more to click. Um, we have a lot more Joiner News coming for you. Please make sure that you guys subscribe so you can get more of the Joiner News and all the other Joiner things we're doing. And as always, make sure you stay fly.